Hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com. It is Friday, December 23rd, 2016. Merry Christmas to everybody. And uh, we're going to take a look at last week's newsletter and see what the results were, some of the things we picked up on that we featured. And uh, here's the letter. Hope you all had a chance to go through it. This very nice uh, plate closes um, today. So if you see this pretty shortly, you might have to take a shot at it. It's a good Kung Shi plate, nice color. Any rate, let's get over to it. Here's uh, the first thing that we uh, uh, put on the list this morning. It was a pair of these uh, Kung Shi plates with a nice flattened rim. Um, a good example. Let's uh, get back to this a little bit. Why I, I like this. It's got precious objects around the rim. This very delicately drawn, nicely drawn um, lotus blossom um, with a, a landscape and garden with a little balustrade in it. Well done. Uh, typical back on them, the incense burner on the reverse. Good Kang Shi piece. And there were two of them, and the pair went for $661. Pairs are always desirable. And this, the uh, Chin, uh, the uh, not Chin Lung, but uh, early 19th century cloisonne uh, hat stand. Hat stands are kind of unusual. You don't see them very often. There's the bottom of it. Uh, they don't turn up, and, and uh, often when they do, they're bent and pretty badly damaged because they, they were prone to falling over um, and getting banged around. But this was a nice one, very attractive, and uh, did very well. A lot of people seemed to like it. It went for $3,322. Came, comes from a dealer we picked up on who's in Italy, who's fairly new, um, but gets good things. So we're hoping to see more from him. And this from uh, Harold's over in the um, uh, United Kingdom had this is good China trade, uh, well-rounded blue and white teapot made in the 1780s or 90s. Typical export style, but a nice one, nice shape to it, and it was in good shape. Uh, the only thing I could see on it, and that the seller mentioned, there was a small nick right there on the rim, which is pretty minor. The handle looks good, the spout looks good, and the body was okay. And that did pretty well. Brought $474. And we had these. These are these, um, let's see if I haven't, I haven't blown it up yet. Let's blow this one up. There were two of these uh, stipple ground or chicken skin ground uh, export uh, uh, vases. They are used often in garniture sets um, with, a, with, a, with this chicken skin ground on them. Let's see if we can uh, get a good look at that here. We'll blow this one up. There we go. Uh, these little these little dimples on it dimples on it. There's a little enamel loss right here, which he took the time to photograph, which is nice. But not that's not a deal breaker on these at all. And uh, but he sold them separately, which kind of surprised me. Uh, I don't know why people break up pairs, but they do. And uh, each of them went for about a thousand dollars. This one went for a thousand thirty-three, and the other one brought uh, I think a thousand eighty-five. BK Treasure sold that. And we have this, uh, nice late Ming, maybe early Qing. They're not always easy to date. Um, uh, wine cup, footed wine cup, done in the archaic manner. It's not an archaic one, but it's a nice one. Had a good surface on it. There we go. Uh, good looking piece, very attractive, nice detail. Uh, very typical um, of uh, the groundwork here of what you see on Ming bronzes. Uh, pretty classic, there it is. He shot it upside down for some reason. There it is again. Um, the only thing this seller did wrong with this, incidentally, if you take your own pictures, is that he shot it against a light, a well-lit background, which is never good because it's a dark piece, and the camera uh, automatically, if it's on automatic, will automatically adjust to the light, and the dominant light is too bright for the piece, so it's hard to even see it. Um, but the detail shots were good, and. Um, it brought $533, which is a good price for that. I do think Ming bronzes are undervalued, though. I don't, I'm not sure why they don't do better. Uh, here is a very nice thing. This was a big, uh, it's rose, rose mandarin, rose medallion um, uh, vase, covered vase. Most in this style are, you know, 12 to 14 inches typically. This one was 17 inches tall. Still had the lid mask handles on the shoulders. The lid had been repaired, which isn't unusual for these. Often the lids are long gone by the time somebody gets them. And uh, the fact that the lid, it was funny, if the, if the guy hadn't put the lid on it, it probably would have brought more money, but there's this weird aversion to anything that's ever been repaired. And it only went for $296. That's a big piece of eight, uh, 1800s porcelain for uh, that kind of money. It was a very good buy. And this, the big uh, silk. This was a large one. It was 21 by 51 inches. Had uh, nice detail and it. Had a few splits, which might have held the price back, but very good quality, a nice 19th century hanging. 
there's the ground. Um, and it still did well. It brought $1,225. Uh, it was a very nice piece. That seller also had some other good things. And we had this, the uh, hand, the armrest. Um, this was a nice one, nice armrest here. Let's, I don't know, let's see, blow that up. There it is. They, they shot it sideways for some reason anyway. But, but this is a, sort of a late 19th century one, but good decoration, and it's a scholar's object, so they always get lots of attention. Here's a side shot of the thing right there in the bottom of it. There you go. And uh, uh, people always chase these. And this one brought $685. There you go. If it was a bowl in that pattern, it would have brought about 150. But because it's a scholar's object, it brought more. And this, these great big uh, uh, Nyona Straits uh, uh, style vases, the, these have very much come into fashion lately. These used to sell for almost nothing. And uh, this was a good big one. Uh, and big vases are always popular. It was 61 centimeters, so it's about two feet tall, a little over two feet tall. Uh, good Phoenix uh, uh, decoration on it. The, the peacocks there, nice pink ground, uh, opposing uh, foo lines on the neck, and it brought $1,025. Good, nice piece. And the silver box. Chinese silver has always surprised me. It never seems to bring as much as you think it should. This was a nice little tobacco box uh, with interesting ground. It's stipple ground like those vases we just looked at, but a nice big uh, uh, tree with uh, workers on it and buildings and a farmer. And uh, this box uh, did a uh, very modest price, $166. Somebody got a really nice buy, I think. And uh, uh, KB Antiques, my friend Kenny had the, this up. This was a very attractive, large blue and white 18th century uh, uh, charger with uh, flowers. And you can see the citron fingers here and a nice border, the brown dressing on the rim. Good looking back, typical back on these with this, this slightly browned uh, foot little bit of drawing on it and uh, did very well brought eighteen hundred and twenty five dollars but it was a big plate this was 17 inches which is a really big charger and this again Canton <laughs> uh, has, has, isn't getting any love from collectors it seems this, these days it's probably a good thing to buy if you're interested in them this only went for hundred and fifty two dollars this was about a 15 inch uh, plate a nice one good export quality there it is and uh, it was in perfect condition. Uh, it had a minor, few minor little fritz on it, as I recall, and went for $150. It's funny because these used to bring, 15 years ago, a big plate like this would have brought about $450 to $600. And uh, then we had this fellow. This seller, he's a dealer in the UK, and he had a bunch of um, nice little Ming boxes. Um, he had one with the flowers on it and two with rabbits. And uh, often the rabbit ones do better uh, than the plain ones, but this one was very well drawn, nice scrolls on it. Um, it went for $212, and uh, if you collect Ming Blue and White, you can still pick these little boxes up quite reasonably. Um, there it is, nice little box. And this guy put in good detail shots, had some, some, some lines in the glaze on the inside of the lid, which isn't, isn't, isn't anything. Nobody cares about that stuff. There's the bottom of it. Again, you can see where the glaze creeped during the firing and a uh, nice foot on it, nice creamy glaze. And it only went for $212. So that was a pretty good buy uh, for somebody that wants to collect some Ming porcelain. You can still buy Ming. And this, the Chinese Amari uh, side handle uh, chocolate pot. And uh, very nice done. They call it a coffee pot. It really wasn't. It was actually a chocolate pot. Good example. Nice underglazed blue. Uh, good looking spout. No repairs. Few chips under the rim here and here. But that's about it. And uh, it went for a very reasonable $249. Somebody got a good buy on this. These are good size and they present well. And we had these from uh, the seller in France, Tony uh, Scrap Dixon. He's always got a bunch of stuff up. I notice he doesn't have anything up right now. I suspect he's gone away on holiday for Christmas. But he had this, and I thought this would do well. This was a really interesting piece, and I think some, some bronze buyers were asleep at the switch out here. This is a Yuan, a Ming period um, um, uh, burnt incense uh, stand, but a good early one with these figures on it, very nicely done, with these chimeras up on the top. Um, had everything going for it. Unfortunately, the pictures were awfully dark, so it was kind of hard to see. But it was a nice example. There are the figures on it. 
deep, deep patina. Uh, you know, or, you know, this is a Yuan to Ming Dynasty object. It went for a, a, only two hundred and seventy-two dollars. So somebody got a great buy. And you had a, we had a bunch of silks. Silks continue to do well. Uh, this nice big rondel, uh, 18th or early 19th century, went for $1,727. And this panel here with the Foo Lions, uh, looks like a pair of rank badges. Oh, it is a pair of rank badges. There you go, 1358 It's a nice lot of silk. This, uh, this particular seller gets good silks. Uh, his username is Tabgatch. I don't know where he gets them, but he gets them pretty regularly. And uh, one of the last things we're going to look at is this pair of um, uh, cash bows, uh, rose, rose medallion cash bows. These are pretty rare. They don't turn up very often. And uh, it's interesting. Uh, it, one of them had a little bit of a damage and repair and old staples, uh, which you often see on these. These are pretty fragile. They, get, they used to get used a lot. People would put plants on them. They have these holes. On the, the seller was, wrote that he didn't know what the holes were for. Uh, they were for plants. And uh, here's the side. There's the mouth of them. And uh, they went very reasonably. These were a hell of a buy, even though only one of them had repairs to it, but they only went for $443. Seems to me a single, just one of them is worth probably around six or 700. But uh, somebody got a good buy on these. This was from a seller in, um, in uh, um, uh, Australia. All right. Uh, or no, no, this is a seller in the US, Cumberland, Rhode Island, what am I saying? Excuse me. And, and then last, we have this. This was an enormous um, silver, uh, silver form uh, Chinese export platter done like a big serving tray with a very, uh, very wide border, a nice big border, very well drawn, good uh, pure white on it. This seller is a seller also in Rhode Island. She gets good things. And uh, this thing went for nothing. I was shocked. Two, it had no bids, excuse me. Didn't sell at all. Um, which is really surprising. Uh, I'm not sure where everybody was. This was a good plate. Um, it would have been a steal at $279. Now, sometimes these higher, little higher opening estimates discourage bidders. Um, but when you see these, as I've said many times, if you'd be willing to pay $279 for this, and I, I can't think of many people that wouldn't, if you're a dealer or a collector, uh, throw a bid on it. You, you may get it for just one bid. And uh, there's, there's no monetary downside to a plate like that for under $300. And um, that's the end of it. Um, finishing up uh, the week, we're getting ready to go away for Christmas around here. And one of the things we're going to be adding to this page, uh, for those of you that get the newsletter announcements each week, is we're going to be adding sort of a weekly addendum page of things that we come across during the week. They're too late to go in the newsletter or they may be coming up and closing you know, in 10 days. And we're gonna sort of have a second page where you can look and see if we found anything else that we might have missed, all right? And as always, um, uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber to us here on YouTube. And if you haven't signed up for the uh, newsletter announcements, they're free, they go out every Saturday night. And uh, just come to the site, you can sign up for it. Just click the little newspaper doodad there, it'll let you do it. And uh, have a great Christmas, and uh, we'll see you next week. Alrighty. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.